On first glance, most folks who meet me assume I grew up in the city that I currently live in. I fit in pretty well, cities feel like home to me, and I love where I live. It's a fun shock when I tell them I haven't, and even more fun when I explain where I'm from. See, I grew up in a small town in northeastern Ontario, Canada called Kirkland Lake. It's known for exactly two things, hockey history and gold mining. And since a lot of folks seem to think that mining is a thing of the past, I'd like to educate the masses more if y'all don't mind. Don't worry, I'll go easy on you today, but let us know in the comments if you want me to start going more into, let's say, superstitions and uses for old mines. The Lamy Deha mine in Musari Range was the first iron ore mine in India and is in the district of Uttarakhand. I swear, I did look up pronunciations. The workers who live near the mine died coughing up vein fluids because of a lung disorder caused by the poisonous gases coming out of the mines. So if you watched the video I did last week on the Old West, I know that's already common knowledge, but I don't expect everybody to watch every video. If you do, I love you. If not, no hard feelings. So the descendants of the miners would play hide and seek in the mines, and they also contracted lung disease. The mine was abandoned after being shut down in 1995, and I can understand why for folks' safety. Back in the 90s, around 50,000 mine workers died an agonizing death due to faulty mining practices. There are stories that people who have gone into those mines have never returned. So if you decide to be kind of kooky and visit this place, just make sure you go with a group and you're not alone, because if you go alone, you might get lost inside the tunnels, and well, that's the end of you. The Ringwood Mine is in the town of Ringwood, New Jersey, and was once one of the largest producers of iron in the world. Lots of mines tend to get named after where they were staked, like the biggest mine in my hometown used to literally be called Kirkland Lake Gold when I lived there. They've since merged with another company and got renamed, but you get the idea. So Ringwood Mine has been abandoned since the early 1900s, but it's still open to tourists who want to explore its dark depths. But why is it creepy? Well, during its time as an active mine, thousands of workers labored in dangerous conditions, and a lot of folks lost their lives due to cave-ins and other accidents. The mine was also known for its poor working conditions and low pay rate. Miners were expected to work in unsafe conditions for less than a dollar a day. Within the dark depths, miners would report knocking sounds at irregular intervals. The knocks would almost always precede an incident, and this was reported by the Peterson Morning Call in July of 1947, when two federally restored Ringwood mines reopened for a brief and final time. The sounds could have been attributed to shifting along fault lines, but miners created a story to match their spooky subterranean surroundings. Some miners said the knocking was a warning sent from a ghost that an accident was about to occur. Many locals claim they've seen paranormal activity here, such as hearing footsteps or voices coming from inside the abandoned mines. Some folks even say they see the ghosts walking around their homes with lanterns in hand. You know, the usually ghostly fare. Am I about to become a broken record? Probably. There is another alleged Ringwood ghost that managed to make it out of the mines though, the ghost of Robert Erskine. George Washington's surveyor general and confidant in the Continental Army, he took over the mines in 1771 and ran them during the Revolutionary War. When he died from illness at age 45 in 1780, he was buried a couple of thousand feet from Ringwood Manor in a partially exposed brick vault topped with a stone slab. Legend has it that about a century later, some bricks jostled loose and out came the ghost, followed by a skeleton. The ghost would often sit atop his brick-lined crypt a couple of thousand feet from the manor, holding a blue lantern, which this is all according to a tale recorded in a 1951 appendix to the congressional record. The skeleton would wander between the graves and manor, scaring passerbys with its rattling bones, and just hang out. The ghost evidently stuck around the manor house until the head of the household, Sarah Hewitt, had the loose brickwork repaired in the early 1900s. Oaks Pit is an abandoned mine near Barnsley, West Riding in England. The pit was the site of one of the worst mining disasters in British history when 361 men, boys and rescuers died during two days of explosions on December 12th of 1866. It was fire damp, the gases you commonly found in mines, which were usually like methane, igniting, that caused the first explosion, which resulted in an underground fire that raged for several days. The exposition would go on for two more days, destroying all wooden supports and equipment in the area. About a hundred tons of coal collapsed into a crater at the mouth of the shaft. Now, a few years ago, a team of paranormal investigators visited this site to uncover some information about what happened here so many years ago, and concluded, yeah, this land is cursed. Kamioka Mine is situated in the deserted village of the same name. The quarry was founded in the early 19th century on a desert island near Kyushu. Over 800 years ago, scientists discovered rich deposits of cadmium ore, which was the reason for constructing large-scale mines. Mining was carried out until the 1980s. After the end of the industrial production of ore, Kamioka became a deserted village, and large-scale mines were, well, unnecessary. A few years after the closing, a small research laboratory opened to conduct research of neutrinos, but most of the underground labyrinths 
still lay in ruins. For many years, large scale underground structures have been attracting the attention of tourists. Why? Well, you've got some dripping water, you got some rusty rails that were used for transporting ore. Overall, it just gives this place a very mysterious and sinister vibe. Shadows from abandoned locomotives and drilling machines add a little bit of fear. Now, some mines look quite organized, while others are embraced with crisscrossing networks of rusty floors and partially inundated with stones from crumbling walls. In the middle of the last century, mining camp residents began to suffer from diseases unknown to science in the area. As it turned out later, their cause was thanks to the vapors of cadmium salts, which over the years of production soaked to the earth of the island. Now, if you were going to go and try and visit today, the entrance to the village is officially closed, but people find their way in if they want to. The Tinopa Mining District in the western part of the Wrangell Mountains is now a museum. The park has many historic buildings that were used during the glory days of the early 1900 silver rush. These buildings included a hospital, some offices, a blacksmith shop, bunkhouses, and more. There are guides that can tell you about how the miners lived, worked, and played during their time. Many ghost stories are associated with this region because of its history. Some say that prospectors who died in an avalanche or a cave-in like to haunt the area. Other folks say that indigenous spirits like to haunt the area to scare people away. Get the heck out of there. The mine shaft has been restored so visitors can see what it was like for miners working underground, and it is possible to take a guided walking ghost tour at night. That's where you find out all the specifics about stories about all the ghosties that everybody's seen over the years. The Polish town of Velicek can boast one of the most mysterious and interesting mines in the world. Local residents have managed to turn it into a work of art. The abandoned salt mine has been converted into a museum dedicated to the history and culture of the town. The venue was opened in 1978 and is currently a unique central center and a landmark of world importance. It traces the history of Velicek and the history of mining. Despite the fact that the empty corridors of the mines have been arranged to become places of storage of priceless historical artifacts, a walk through the tunnels doesn't cease to be a frightening and exciting event. Even the silence there is kinda spooky. The atmosphere is complemented by dim lighting and an abundance of shadows casted by antique furniture, huge chandeliers, and sculptures represented in some of the hall. Where's the fan with the opera? The total length of the tunnel is a little less than 300 kilometers, but it's prohibited to walk there unaccompanied. So. Don't do it alone, folks. I would like to see you alive in the future. Located in Oxtenburg, New Jersey, the Sterling Hill Mine is one of the most popular ghost mines in all of the United States. Or so I've been told. The mine is over 2,500 feet deep and has a network of tunnels that spans 35 miles. Time for history, folks. In 1897, the Sterling Hill Mining Company started mining operations at the site, hoping to find zinc or iron deposits. Unfortunately for them, their search didn't meet those expectations, but not before it cost a lot of folks' lives. Throughout its 90 years of operation, the mine saw nearly 77 deaths from accidents and explosions. Visitors to the mine today have reported several paranormal experiences. We're talking the usual ghosty footsteps weird voices, whispers, and even an apparition of a miner carrying a lantern. Some visitors even claim that unseen hands have either touched or pushed them. This mine has a variety of tours available that you can indulge in if you feel necessary to check it out. The Vulture Mine opened in 1863 and was one of the first to produce gold in Arizona. It was also one of the most prolific mines in the state, producing millions worth of ore by 1946. When it closed later in history, it was one of the richest mines in the southwest. It reopened once again to produce around $2 million worth of gold from 1942 to 1944, but closed after the war ended. Paranormal investigators from the popular show Ghost Adventures visited the site during a season and were chased the heck out by locals, saying, uh, you're gonna die if you try this again. So I think when all was said and done, they spent about an hour inside and they were like, okay. I know Zach was like, we saw some apparitions. I heard what sounded like firing noises coming from above. Now this was just during an hour, but this was during his investigations. So might be worth the risk to return for something longer than an hour. The Atlas Coal Mine, located in Alberta, Canada, opened in 1936 and closed down in 1979. The mine was primarily used to produce bituminous coal, which was used for electricity generation and heating purposes. The mine had two shafts, which were both connected by a tunnel at their base. The owners of the mine also built housing facilities for their employees and families, and they even built like a school, a library, a hospital. Some buildings are still standing, even though the mine was closed in 1979, and it's said about eight people died inside this old abandoned facility. There are many legends surrounding this haunted ghost town and its history. A lot of folks who have ventured there reported seeing strange lights inside the building, hearing strange noises. The usual. I couldn't not have a single Canadian mine on my list today. I had to. How about we end today with the Dugan Quarry? So quarries, which have been mined for a few hundred years, represent a particular interest to fearless tourists. One of the oldest industrial mines on the planet is situated near the suburbs of Moscow. Mining of this quarry began in the 16th century, when folks were looking for the so-called white stone 
which is known as limestone, which was used extensively in the construction of Moscow. Russia's quarry hasn't lost its special atmosphere for hundreds of years, and it seems like time has literally stopped there. You can find a lot of artifacts from different eras in the narrow passages built of stones, there's wall paintings, garments from old workers, old burners used to cook food, and plenty of other interesting things. While walking through the dark, twisted corridors, you can see a lot of caves. Just to think that once upon a time, people could live and sleep in these dark caves feels so uneasy. It's also worth noting that the structure of this mine is pretty complicated, so it's very risky to go for a walk without a map and an experienced guide. Despite being a terrible attraction in my opinion, it does attract a lot of visitors. Now this is partially because it's like forbidden, so don't maybe don't do it. And that's it for me once again. I've been Alexa, your resident emo girly. See y'all next time I buzz in over here at Bumblebee.